Hey friends, hope you're doing well. I know it's been a while since I've done any videos and that's just because sometimes life gets the better of me. Uh, life's been hectic, life's been crazy, but there's something I just feel compelled to talk about with you and so I'm sharing it today. And what I want to talk to you about is what I call the gospel of the geek. You see, a while back, I got a comment on some things I posted on one of my various social media. I don't remember which one. And it's just been turning around in my head for quite some time. And the poster uh, implied I wasn't a Christian because all I did was preach the gospel of the geek, the geek gospel. And that's a term I've used before. It's one I haven't used in a while, but it's one I've used before. So what is the gospel of the geek according to the geek preacher? Well, that's a bit of a story, you see. A number of years ago, as I was preparing my work with the United Methodist Church toward ordination, I um, was meeting with some people. You have to meet with people before you go to before a board of ministry. And I was meeting with people and they were asking me questions and some asked me about my work as the geek preacher. And I said, you know, I'm just a geek. Meaning I like nerdy things, dorky things, strange things, pop culture things, science fiction, fantasy, all that. Any of you who have followed me for any length of time understand that. And I really, do enjoy those things. But one of the people on the board said to me, she said, I don't think you're a geek. I think you're pretty cool. Well, that made me feel good, but then I began to think about it. And that's the reason this person said that, I believe now, is because being a geek is cool. Being a geek is part of pop culture. We've seen it happening, and that's because people that grew up in the 70s, 80s, even the 90s are now working in much of the media industry, and they're propagating lots of geeky things. I mean, there's fantasy TV series out there, whether you like them or not, they're pretty standard. There's science fiction movies, television shows, uh, all kinds of things. Geek culture is a part of what we are. But when I talk about the gospel of the geek, when I'm referring to that, I'm referring to uh, the geek of my youth. You see, when I was a kid, it wasn't cool to be a geek. The nerdy things I liked got me picked on. Being called a nerd, dork, and geek weren't nice things. They weren't something you'd identify as. When you identified it as a geek or someone else identified you as a geek, you were considered an outsider, you were considered abnormal, you were considered strange, you were considered weird. And uh, after a while, some of us began to embrace that. We began to embrace these derogatory comments that people used, and we would claim it, you know, claim those negative words that people had used against us, much the same way as... My fellow Southerners claimed redneck, uh, you know, uh, as being a part of the working class. That was a pejorative term that was often used. And rednecks claimed that term. There are all types of terms people claim that were used about them negatively. And then they own the term. But as a geek, I began to claim that term. And then as someone who became a Christian and began following Jesus... I began to think about what it means to be a geek and what that gospel of the geek looks like according to Jesus. And you see in Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter, I think it's 25, yeah, uh, it says here, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. 
Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. It goes on to say, they ask the Lord, when did we do these things? And the Lord responds, I tell you, when it, you did it to one of the least of these siblings of mine, you did it to me. Now, the key phrase in the gospel of the geek is you welcomed the stranger. That means you welcomed the outsider. You welcomed those who were different. And right now in the United States of America, we're going through something we continually go through. And that is a fear of immigrants, a fear of the other, a fear of the outsider. And right now the Haitian people are facing that in our country, uh, especially in Ohio, where they're being accused of some vile acts, which are blatantly untrue. But what it is, it's a fear mongering. It's to make people afraid of the stranger. There's a word for that. It's called xenophobia. Xenophobia. Now, there is a phrase in the scripture. It's in the book of Hebrews. It's called xenophilia in the original Greek. The love of the stranger or the love of the other. And it says in that book in Hebrews that when you welcome, you love the stranger, you have most likely entertained angels among you. See, it's the stranger that Jesus calls us to welcome. And that is an essential part of the gospel or the good news of Jesus. It's to welcome the stranger. Don't ostracize them. Don't call them names. Don't make up stories about them. This, my friends, is the gospel of the geek. And I hope and I pray that if you are a follower of Jesus, that you will read Matthew 25 and you will read what Jesus says his followers should be doing. And that is welcoming the stranger. And in the book of Hebrews, it takes it even further, saying, love the stranger. Feed the stranger in Matthew 25. Love the stranger in the book of Hebrews. This, my friends, is the gospel of the geek. Welcoming the outsider, showing them love, and showing them compassion. I hope you have a wonderful day, and God bless you all.